Hey, Joe Gilder here with PreSonus. In the last video, I did an overview of my five-step mix process. Today, we're gonna dive into step one, which is mix setup. Not the funnest topic, but we gotta set things up before we can start having fun, so let's do it. Okay, to set up this session, we're gonna create a new session in Studio One using my current mixing template, which is called Mix Plus Folders right now. If you wanna download this session file and make it into your own template, you can. Uh, a link to that will be below in the description. Open it up as a normal song file, change it however it needs to be changed for your specific setup, then you can save that as a template. Okay, we've named our song, we've selected our template, we are good to go. Okay, here's what a blank session looks like for me. I know it's not terribly blank, is it? It consists of a couple of things. If you look in just the arranger window, um, on the top left, we have a series of, they look like tracks, they're actually folder tracks. And these are set up for me to put my drums, bass track, electrics, acoustics, keys, vocals, and background vocals into these folders. Those are typically the kind of songs that I'm mixing have those types of instruments. You can always change those. One thing that I've done is I've connected each of these folders to its corresponding bus with the same name. So as you can see, uh, when I select the drums here and go over to the mix window, you can see that my drums bus is first of all the same color, um, as the uh, as the drum folder, uh, but it's also a bus for that channel. So this is my drums bus, my bass bus, my electric bus. This is my drums bus. This is my drums folder, my bass folder, my electric folder. It'll all make sense in a second. So my session essentially consists of folders to put all my tracks in. Each of those folders has its own bus that I will route my tracks to. And then these white tracks here are all the different effects that I like to use in my session. So I've got uh, a room reverb, a plate reverb, and a spring reverb. The room reverb I use occasionally, just a general size room. Plate reverb is a big, long, six second delay. I'm sorry, six second reverb. Actually using room reverb, which comes with Studio One, uh, but I've just got it set up to this flat plate setting with a really long decay time. Can be great for a lot of ambient stuff. And then I've got a spring reverb that I use. I bought the Convology spring reverb pack of, um, what's it called, impulse responses for open air. Um, and that's really one of the only things I've bought that don't that don't come stock with Studio One. Um, and I found a nice spring reverb that I like. It's got a nice brightness to it that I like on guitars and honestly on vocals and a few other things occasionally as well. Then there are three delays that I like. Uh, two of them using analog delay. It's just a regular slapback delay. Then a quarter note analog delay. Same delay plug-in, just slightly different settings for a time delay versus just a single slapback. And then for a half note beat delay, uh, I decided to use the beat delay plug-in, which gives me uh, some s options in stereo to make it have more of a stereo feel in the delay. Um, and I've got all of those there waiting for me. Now, why are they set up on their own tracks over here? They're on their own effects track or effects bus so that at any point, if I want to give my vocal uh, some slapback, I don't have to go over here in my browser and find the slapback plugin. I don't have to create a bus and then put a plugin on there. I literally just have to go over here on the vocal track. I can say, let's send the vocals to slap delay. And boom, I've got slap delay. I can turn it up or down as needed. Uh, now, having them on separate um, effects, sends, and returns also means I can do things like, you know what, I want a little bit of spring reverb on the vocal. I want a little bit more of that spring reverb on the electric guitars. And you know what, I like a little spring reverb on those keys as well. And I can have different levels of each going to the single spring reverb over here. You may have also noticed I've got EQs on each of these. I like to roll off the low end on my reverb so they don't get muddy. And then these fat channels on each of my buses don't have anything, the EQs are turned on, but there's no processing happening. Um, I've got mostly the uh, FET comp compressor on there. I've got this uh, classic compressor on the drums because that's the one I tend to use a lot. And then on my mix bus, I've got this Brit comp set up and ready to go. Again, none of them are on. They're just there ready for me to use them. Final thing, I've got the level meter plug-in over here on my post section of my main output. And the level meter is a cool plug-in. You can take the window and resize it. So I resize it as tall as I can get it. Uh, I click the 
little pin there to keep this window open at all times. And then I just drag it right over here to the edge of the screen. A lot of you have asked about that. That's how I get that big honking meter on the side of the screen. Really doesn't, I don't miss any of that horizontal real estate on the screen. Uh, and having that big meter there is super fun and handy. Okay, so this is my template. This is my starting point. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I've set it up the way I have other than what I've already explained to you. Let me grab some tracks and I'll show you. Okay, here are a set of tracks from a song of mine called Amen. It's got a lot of different parts to it that should make uh, for good material to show you some of the things I'm going to show you here in this setup section. So I'm going to select all of these and drag them into Studio One. As you can see, it'll start to populate the waveform. I wanna make sure these copy over. If you go under locations and preferences, make sure to always have asked to copy external files when saving song selected. That means when I hit save here, command S, it's gonna say, hey, you wanna copy these into this songs folder? And to me, the answer is always and forever, yes. I actually can't think of many reasons why I wouldn't want to do that, but that will literally copy them from whatever hard drive they're on currently to my working drive in my Studio One songs folder in the folder along with everything else associated with this particular mix. Always a good idea. You never know when you accidentally delete something somewhere else, not thinking it would affect you, but it actually affects you. So we can see all the tracks have been randomly assigned different colors, and they've all been routed to the main output, which is very normal. A couple of things I want to do. Let's take the background vocals, for example. So here are my background vocals here. A couple of things I want to do to these. I want to make them all the same color. I want to put them in my background vocal folder, and I also want to route them to my background vocal bus. Now that's easy enough to do. Drag them to the folder, select them all, change the output, um, and then uh, select them all and change the color. Well, what if I could do all of that in just one move? I can. That's why I've set up these folders. So first thing to note is this background vocal folder is colored purple. It is routed to the background vocal bus, Okay, so I'm going to go select these background vocal tracks again. Click the first one, hold down shift, click the last one. If you haven't watched my uh, Getting Faster video, it'll talk about stuff like that. I'm going to click, I'm going to hover my mouse around the PreSonus emblem here, drag it up until it highlights the folder, not between, but highlights the entire folder and let go. And boom, look what happened. All the background vocals are there. They are now colored purple, and if we look at the tracks themselves, we can see that they are now all routed to the background vocal bus. So I've killed three birds. Sorry, killing is so violent. I've killed three birds with one stone, and I can continue to, to do that with all my tracks. So all my acoustic guitars, those are all going to go in my acoustic bus. Bam, green, and routed to the correct bus. I've got two bass tracks. Those are going to go to my bass bus. Uh, bass bus might sound silly because sometimes you only have one bass track. Uh, I don't think so because sometimes I just like to have everything going to a bus. And a lot of times I have more than one bass track anyway. Electric guitar, same deal. We're just going to make sure they all get to where they need to go. All right, opera. It's its own sort of background vocal thing. You'll probably see that in a little bit. We'll put those in the background vocal bus as well. Uh, organ, pipe organ, church bell, and... See, those are all like my keyboard-ish type sounds. We're going to put those in keys. We're going to take all of our vocals. There's Vox 2, 3, Vox Chorus, and Vox Verse. Uh, Vox is short for vocal, by the way. I'm going to put those in here. Okay. And then what's left? I think these are all my drum tracks. They look like drum tracks. I'm going to drag all of those into my drum bus. So it's a fairly big session. Let me close some of these folders so I can see what I need to see. Okay, great, now I can drag these up into my drum folder. Now let's quickly organize them in the order that I want. We've got kick, snare, top, snare, bottom, tom one, tom two, uh, overhead, uh, sub kick over here by the kick, swell at the bottom, overhead, fat mic, trash mic, those are kind of just single mics that kind of do different things, just pick up extra tone in the kit, and then stairwell is kind of my room mic. Now, we've done a fair amount of work here without listening to a single thing. I actually like to do this step of the process um, sometimes the day before I plan to actually do the mix, because it's so non-creative, it's just more like busy work, so a lot of times I like to do this 
um, while listening to music or watching a YouTube video or something in the background because it's just it's just a matter of moving things around. So now I'm going to zoom in on the waveform so I can see what's happening. The next thing I like to do, especially if it's a song I don't know, is to make sure I've got things organized kind of from left to right, top to bottom. So for example, these vocals. The uh, This first vocal comes in is the first one to come in, so it's gonna be the first one in line, top to bottom. And then the next vocal is gonna be here, and so on and so forth. Uh, these background vocals, they come in before the opera vocals, so we're gonna put those f above it. So I'm kinda, as I'm going through each, each group, I'm kinda seeing things as they come in. Acoustic guitar one comes in first, then acoustics two and three come in, so I can kind of see those. Everything's coming in in order. Organ is the first thing to come in, then the church bell, then the pipe organ. I've got those lined up. And that's the process. It takes zero musical ability to do that. Uh, but I've got all my songs, I've got all the files, all the, I <laughs> can't talk. I've got all the tracks in my session. I've got them all routed to the prop, proper place. And then I just come in and make sure that my effects buses are still on the far right hand side of the session. Um, and then all my folders are here. Um, and we can actually even, I believe, this is new, this is something I haven't started doing, but I wanna see something, hold on. I'm gonna hit pause for just a second. Yeah, this is something I got from, I was watching one of Gregor's videos here on PreSonus, and he was talking about the way instrument tracks, if you have multi-instruments, you can pack them all so you only see one fader inside of uh, the mixer window. I, f I had a sneaky suspicion you can do that with just audio tracks and folders as well. And sure enough, link, hide, expects collapsed folders within the track, show, and hide. It's a long way to say when I click this folder on this background vocal bus slash folder, it should, yeah, it packs the folder both in the mix window and here in the, or in the edit window and also here in the mix window. Look at that. So even though I've got a whole bunch of tracks in my session, I can simplify it down to just this if I wanted to. And this will make more sense when we get to step four. We talk about top-down mixing. Uh, it's a great way for us to kind of, once we've done our mix of the drums, for example, we can kind of close it up and just think about the drums as a whole. I don't know if that's the way I'll end up working, but it's neat to know that that is an option. Uh, and I'll kind of keep that in my back pocket. We'll see where that goes. But now our session is set up. Everything's there. We've not done anything with audio. We've just got the session set up and ready to go. And I'm excited to see what happens. I need to remove <laughs> these uh, spring reverbs that I put on there because those were just for demonstration. Okay. Final thing, my end flag here defaults to five minutes over here. This song is only a little over three minutes, so I'm gonna move that in just so I don't forget to do that later and then bring the start in a little bit as well. Uh, and that's it, that is my setup process. I mean, it took us, you know, 15, 20 minutes with me explaining every step of the process, but realistically, this, this can be just a nice, simple task that you do, maybe the day before you're gonna mix something. So when you come into mix, you can just hit play and start listening to things and making creative decisions as opposed to doing all this administrative work. But it's nice and clean, it looks like I want it to look, and we're good to go. Final thing I didn't mention, this folder here at the bottom called Ref. This is set up and it's routed to a reference bus. And this is something that's unique to my setup. It might not make sense for you. Uh, if we take a look at my outputs for my system, I've got um, a set, my main outputs are coming down channels one and two of my studio live mixer. And then I've got another set of channels um, on channel 29 and 30, that's my output from my computer. So if I have Spotify playing, that's the fader that it comes down and I've got those next to each other on the mixer. Um, if I wanna have a reference within my session, uh, I don't want it coming out my main output, I don't want it hitting my mix bus, I put it into this reference folder here and it gets routed, as you can see here, out this reference output, which is going to channels 29 and 30 as well. That means that channels 29 and 30, which is my playback track for anything coming out of my computer from the internet or Spotify or iTunes, also anything in this folder will play down that channel as well. So I can easily mute it here on my mixer and flip back and forth if I have a reference there that I want to hear. I don't use that all the time, but it's there and it's already routed, so I don't have to do any routing. Um, that's the beautiful thing of these folders. Once the folder is routed somewhere, you just drag something into said folder and it will automatically route that thing to that output. Super handy. I really love using these folders. If nothing else, just for this setup, I may never collapse a folder again over the course of the mix, but it saves me a lot of time and frustration in my setup process by using them. All right, thanks for watching. I'm Joe Gilder with PreSonus. I'll see you in the next one.